Hey everybody, AJ here. Welcome, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to have a look at Microsoft Lists in Microsoft Teams. Microsoft Lists is essentially a smart tracking app that is built on the back end of Microsoft SharePoint Lists. But now that it's in Microsoft Teams, it becomes much more user friendly and much more accessible. I've been using Lists now for about six weeks and I absolutely love using it. So let me know in the comments section below how you plan on using Microsoft Lists as well. There are so many different ways to take advantage of Microsoft Lists. A few examples from Microsoft would be using it as an incident tracker, an itinerary checklist, but I see it as basically anything that you need to track and share with the team, you can use Microsoft Lists for. I've been using Lists myself as a mini CRM and I love the fact that because it's part of Microsoft Teams, everybody within my team site can see, access and share the information. It's really user friendly and intuitive, so it doesn't take a, it's not a very big learning curve to understand and build it a list the way you want to. And of course, I think it just looks really good. So with that being said, how about we dive into it and I can show you how you can start using Microsoft Lists today. All right, so let's jump into Microsoft Teams and let's find the team that we want to build this list in. So now that we have Microsoft Teams open, we're going to, we're going to build our list in the Mark A Project team site. If we scroll down to the Go to Market Plan channel, this is where we're going to build our first list. At the top of this Go to Market Plan channel, you can see that there are a bunch of different tabs. We have posts, files, wikis, so many different things. To add a new list in here, we simply want to select on the plus symbol on the right hand side, and then this is going to bring us the option of adding new tabs. So we have our most recently used applications um, at the top here, and down the bottom are a range of different third-party apps that work with Microsoft Teams. If you can't see lists in this added tab section, simply search for it in the search bar, type in lists, and we can see it there it is the purple option. There is that third-party app called Listy. I've never used it before, but for today, we're gonna focus on using Microsoft Lists. So let's select lists, and this is gonna open up a new window which is going to say select save to add this list to your channel. Cool, we've got a nice little welcome to list sign here and then we have two options of creating a list for this tab or we can add in an existing list. We're going to pretend we don't have any existing lists and we're going to select on create a new one. Now we're greeted with the three options at the top here of creating a list from blank. We can bring in an Excel spreadsheet or we can use an existing list and down the bottom here, Microsoft gives you a range of different templates. Before we build our own blank list, let's have a look at a couple of these different templates here. So you can have a look at the incident tracker, which has at the top here, the issues, descriptions. You can have priority lists and statuses and assign it to people. Um, or you can have a look at the event itinerary. This gives us uh, session names and it allows us to add different types and speakers. And you can see here, these are very well thought out lists. Um, I love the fact that this capacity here is highlighted in blue and it shows you maximum capacities. But my favorite one has to be the asset management because it allows you to add photos into your lists as well. I recommend if it's your first time using Microsoft Lists, have a look at these different templates and see if there's one that you can just change around to suit your needs instead of having to build it from scratch. But for this example, we're gonna build it from scratch. So I'm not gonna hit on the use template. I'm gonna hit the cancel option and we're gonna go back to our original start page and we're gonna go create list again. Now we're gonna select on create a blank list. First we need to do is add a name and a description. This is gonna be our customer tracker for our go to market plan. So we're just gonna call this the GTM customer tracker. Feel free to add a description if you'd like so people know what this tracker is about. I'm going to skip that for now, but I am going to choose a color. We're going to make it a nice blue and a little icon. Let's, um, let's have a little color palette because I just like how that looks. And we're going to hit create. What you'll see is at the top here, it's going to change the word from lists and it's going to actually call it our GTM customer tracker because we've officially given this list a name. So now we're greeted with a very blank looking list. All we have right now is a title column and the option to add even more columns. Pretty much all your controls are along the top line here where you have new items and you're editing. The ellipses always means more and this gives you the option to either export that list to Excel or open it in SharePoint lists, which is essentially where this team site lives. And on the right hand side, you have a few more options such as different ways of viewing it and editing the format. A filter, if you wanted to filter 
through all the different columns you create, and of course, information about that list. Because this is a go-to-market customer tracker, we're gonna need a few key things. We're gonna need dates that the lead was created. We're gonna need the customer name, next steps, maybe the representative who owned the account. And of course, I love red, green, and amber symbols because that just shows us the status of the account. So to add new columns to our list here, we're simply gonna select on the add column option and we're gonna click on the drop down. And here we have a range of different choices. We can add in a column that gives us only single lines of text or a choice of yes, no's. Dates, so we can have specific dates such as last time the customer was contacted, when the lead was created, whatever the date means to you. Multiple lines of text, I would use this for things such as the next steps and information. Person, so because this is a list within Teams, you can link it to people within that team site and this is where I put, say, a representative's name so you know it would be Alex's account or Aldo's account or somebody who owns that account. Numbers, of course, if you need to put in details. Simple yes and no's. Hyperlinks, if you want to put links to external pages. Currencies, because you may need to do currency conversion. Locations can always come in handy. And of course, the ability to drop in images. So the first thing I want to add in is a date and time. So we're going to select date and time, and this will be called the date created. So this will be, the description is date lead was created. The type, we're going to leave it as date and time. Include the time, we don't need that, but I do want to turn on friendly format. And the default value, well, let's have it set as today's date. So whenever we create a new item, it will default to today's date. We can drop down the more options here. This gives us a bit more control, such as do we require that this column contains information? For this one, we're gonna say no. Uh, do we wanna enforce unique values? Again, no. Uh, and we can add this to all content types. I'm gonna say yes. So that means the date is added to all of our columns. So I'm gonna hit save. And you can see up the top here, we have a date created. I don't want it living there though. I want it to be the first thing that we see. So I'm just gonna simply click and hold and drag it across the column here. And now it's gonna be our first date created. And title moves over. The title tab is always gonna be there in your lists, but I don't need it to be called title. I wanna rename this to just the customer name. So I'm gonna simply drop down the menu here, go down to the column settings and select on rename. And we're gonna call this customer name. Hit save, and we see title is now called customer name. So now we have a date, we have our customer name column, and let's add another one. Maybe this time you wanna add a person, you know, the representative that owns the account. So I'm gonna select on person here, and this will be rep owner. The description is, well, we don't need a description for this one, and we'll leave this as the person or group type. Let's hit save, and now we have a rep owner column as well. Cool, so next, let's, let's add in a few more columns here. We'll drop that down and maybe this time we want to add in multiple lines of text and this could be updates and next steps. I thought the description is pretty much in the name of this column as well. We're doing updates and next steps of the customer. The type, well, it's multiple lines of text but we can change it to any of those other types if we wanted to. Do we want to enter a default value? No, because we're going to be entering some text here and we're gonna hit save one more time. The last thing I wanna add in here is we're gonna drop down that add column and I wanna add in a choice. And this is gonna be our red, green, and amber. And this will be the account status. Again, we're not gonna put a description here because I feel like the colors really speak for themselves and it's gonna be a choice of three different colors. Choice one will be this account is active, two is developing, and three is inactive. So we have active, developing, and inactive. Now let's color coordinate these to what really symbolizes those. We're gonna select on the color palette here, and we're gonna make active green. Developing, we're gonna make that amber color, and inactive, we're gonna add a red. The default value, we could actually have it as active, developing, or inactive. I'm actually gonna add one more choice here, and it is going to be, select me make this a blue color, and the default value is going to be select me. So when someone adds information to this list, they're gonna see the option of select me saying, hey, don't forget to choose me. And now under more options here, we can have it as a drop down menu or a radio button. 
Do we want to have them allowing multiple selections for this? It's more of a yes, no, but you can have those options there to select multiple um, bits within this column. Do we need information in this tab? I'm going to say yes, so they have to pick an option. And then we're not going to add in unique values. We're simply going to select save. Cool. So now we have our date, our customer names, our rep owners, our updates, the next steps, and our account status. Now let's start editing this. There are two ways to edit your list and teams. The first one is the option here that says edit in grid view. This will allow you to make multiple quick edits to the list, or you can select on the button here that says new item, which is going to open up and be much more specific and allow you a bit more focus on that one entry. So let's add in a customer name. We'll call this one Aldo James. The date is already populated to today's date. The rep owner, so it's saying add in a name or an email address. Let's say Alex, so let's start typing in Alex's details. And we're going to select Alex, and that means that Alex is the owner of this account. Updates next steps. Well, how about this one is uh, subscribe to the channel. You can see the asterisk there saying this needs to have an option chosen. We're going to drop down the select me, and we're going to change this to active. So if you're happy with that, you can simply hit back, or you can see down the bottom here, you have the option of adding attachments. So if you had things such as Excel, Word, any sort of document associated with this account, you can simply go add attachment, it's gonna open up your file explorer, and you can drop in any file. For now, I'm gonna drop in this old thumbnail that I have, just hit open, and you see that we now have an attachment added to this column. Cool, so now I'm gonna hit back, and we're gonna see that we have one customer added to our go-to-market customer tracker. Let's add one more in here, but instead of adding a new item, we're gonna select open in grid view. And this is gonna allow us to make some quick edits to this customer, or we can add in a new customer. So let's add the date, but maybe this is a lead we're adding in from last week. Uh, maybe this customer is called Ashley. The rep that owns Ashley is Deb, so as we start typing in Deborah, um, her name appears, we can select Deb. The updates and next steps, well, you know what? Just another friendly reminder, if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button, so that will be the next step, hit that like button. And of course, the account status, we're gonna drop down this option here, and we're gonna put that as active. Now we're gonna simply exit the grid view, and that is gonna save. So we've got the basics down of how we can build and create a list here, but there's a few other tips and tricks that I wanna show you. So say you built a very big list with a lot of different columns, and you wanted to filter some specific information. In the top right hand corner, you can see the little filter symbol. We're simply gonna select on that, and this will take all of our headings and do us different ways of filtering. If we had multiple different reps, we could filter by their names. So let's grab Alex. We could filter, we've got the slider here of the date created. Um, of course, we have customer details. And if we had more and more details, we'd have much more different filtering options in here. You can see we selected Alex and Deborah disappeared from our filtering tracker. But if we untick Alex or if we retick Deborah, it, it'll reload and Deborah's customers are brought up again. So that filter will give you a good way to really quickly filter and find information that you're after. If you want to quickly edit a column and edit its properties, you can simply select on the column such as customer name. You have a few different options of sorting by A to Z or Z to A. You can again hit that filter option or you can go into the column settings. And here you can rename that column like we did earlier. You can show or hide the column. You can add a new column to the list or we can go on the option of format this column, and this will give us different ways of formatting our column. So we can format the column, we can format our view, and this will edit the list for you. There's no one best practice here. I'd recommend having a play around and seeing what suits your list best. And the last thing I wanna show you is how can you share this list with other people? So we've created our Microsoft list, and we wanna let our entire team know about it. What you wanna do is in the top right hand corner, select on the ellipses, and select the link, copy link to tab. This is gonna copy the link to this go to market customer tracker, and now we can share it with people through an email, through a message, or through a Teams post. So now I'm gonna jump over to our design team. I'm gonna create a new conversation, a new post, and we're gonna call this GTM 
customer tracker list. And we can say, hi team, below is the link to our new GDM customer tracker list. And we can paste it in there. Then we can hit send and the entire team is now notified that we've created this list and if they simply select on the hyperlink here, it's going to take them to that go to market list. And now anybody within that team site can edit and view this go to market tracker. Cool. And there you have it. That is the basics you need to get started with Microsoft Lists. I'd love to hear how you guys plan on using it and if you find it an effective way to help your team collaborate and track projects. I think it's a very handy tool and want to see this continue growing in Microsoft Teams. Of course, if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you really want to supercharge how you use Microsoft Teams, hit that subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.